33. I said Genesis. We've been looking at some areas of, oh, just some truths about the Lord that are encouraging. The fact that God is good, I'm glad of that. Not like the gods that the world made up, you know, where you've got to do something so they won't hurt you kind of thing. Uh, God is great. And he can do what needs to be done. Last week we looked at, uh, I found it encouraging anyway, to just the fact that we can live for God. You know, even in a wicked world, we can, we can live for God. Tonight, uh, let's look in Exodus 33. I'm going to read starting in verse 12 and just read a few verses here. Exodus 33, 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, I believe that's the Lord said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. I just stop reading there. Uh, the Lord had indicated to Moses that he was just going to send him in. He wasn't going to go with him. <laughs> I'm going to send my angel, but uh, um, verse 3, I, I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go with thee. I might just destroy you. <laughs> Uh, so Moses is he's, he's pretty upset and uh, talking to the Lord. And the Lord says some things here that are, are very encouraging. And uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see why we looked at the rock, because later on it's when God hides him in the cleft of the rock and, and uh, lets him see some, uh, some of his glory. But in, in verse 12 there, he, he says a couple of things. One, about Moses, he says, I know thee by name. He says, you found grace in my sight. That, that phrase kind of reminds me of um, what the Bible says about Noah. You know, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Um, now, as, as I looked at this, I, I can't find anywhere before this where it records God actually saying these things to Moses. But you do see God saying, Moses. <laughs> he does call him by name, and he has shown uh, grace. You know, he's, he's, he's blessed Moses, and, and so... Uh, I think there's probably things that are recorded in Scripture. How can I put this? Um, that God has said, but it, they didn't record those. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's like that one where it says, uh, as it is written, it's more blessed to give than to receive, and, and you can't find that. We, uh, God obviously said that, but they just didn't record it somewhere else. Anyway, uh, sorry to confuse the issue there. Uh, the, two, the first two things are, one, I know thee by name. Now, we know that's true also for ourselves. God knows who we are. Uh, God knows you by name, and not just vaguely. Uh, I've had it happen at church here where I ask somebody, oh, do you know so-and-so? Oh, oh is, that the, is that the tall guy with two kids? Or is that the, you know, the guy with, you know, kind of, and they kind of know who they are, but they don't really know them. Listen, that's not how God knows you. <laughs> he knows you by name. He, he knows all about you. And you know the scripture where it says he even knows the hair on your head. But uh, in, uh, in John 10, for instance, it says, um, The sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. That's John 10, verse 3. When he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. He knows who we are. God knows us. Later on in John 10, 14, he says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Now, that, that should encourage you. It's also a little bit scary. <laughs> you know, God knows us. He knows all about us. Now, we don't have to tell him everything we're thinking, but it, it, it is good to put it into words what you're thinking. Uh, God knows you. In um, Galatians chapter 4 and verse 8, let's see here what that says. Okay, that's an interesting verse. Galatians 4, 8, How be it then, when you knew not God, you did service unto them, which by nature are no gods. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, 
How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? <laughs> Interesting verse. He's saying, you know, before you were saved, you know, you, you were messed up. So now that you know God, or rather that God knows you, why would you go back to that inferior? You know, why would you even think about not honoring God? Uh, God knowing us is, is a real blessing. Uh, verse 7 of that same passage, he says, Wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. God not only just knows about us, he, we're part of him. We're children of God. And God knowing us is, is a real blessing and should be an encouragement. And when you're going through things, God knows you. Like I've heard of, of people praying and saying, God, it's Bob. <laughs> well... God knows who you are. <laughs> you don't have to tell him. <laughs> I mean, it's all right. You can, you can do that. But uh, uh, it's a wonderful blessing, and, and it should be an encouragement to us that, that God knows us. There's another verse, 2 Timothy uh, 2, verse 19, where he says, The foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And he adds, And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. It's interesting how he... he, he seems to relate those things, those two things. God knows us and not participating in sin. Um, let, let me ask you this, and i get your response here. How does that encourage you? The fact that God knows you by name. Is, is there anything there that speaks to your heart? It just makes it more personal. Okay. You just can't even put it into mind how much God knows. I mean, God knows everything. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just amazing. But when he talks there about God knows us, I mean, God knows the lost, too. I mean, he knows who they are. But he doesn't have a relationship with them. And that's, that's the, you know, this goes beyond just God's knowledge. This has to do with we, we have a relationship Yeah. Evolution wants to make it. We're just yeah. this another animal. In the universe that just happened along, and God made this very special. And yeah. We are His creation, created in His image, and, and it makes us very. And God wants to, He's always wanted to have a relationship with us. Mm. That's, that's huge. It's very special. It's special. Mm. I feel like I have access to God all day long. Yeah. There's nothing I can hide from God, so it's really a blessing to me to know that the good and the bad that go through my brain or my heart or whatever, I can just say it all to Him. He already knows. And, yeah. And we're working together. I mean, I try to work to be submitted to Him so He can <laughs> do what He needs to do. Yeah. That's a blessing, isn't it? It should be encouraging to us that God knows us. God knows us by name. Paul wrote in Philippians, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Yeah. Uh, I think what he's saying there is, I, I want to know the Lord better. I want to know him more. Well, God knows us already. And we need to, to, to learn to, to know uh, the Lord in a, in a more complete way. God knows you by name. The, the other one that he mentioned there was, you found grace in his sight. Yeah, if we're saved, I mean, grace is available to everyone, but as Christians, we're saved by grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. Um, grace, the, the meaning of it there in, in Exodus is favor. And uh, yeah, it's true. We, we have been blessed. God has shown us favor. Later on in Exodus 33, verse 19, uh, the last part of the verse, he says, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Well, God has shown us mercy. God has shown us grace. And when we, when we trust him, we've received that grace. Uh, 
because we've found grace in his sight, one of the things we should do is thank him. <laughs> uh, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. It cometh down from the Father of lights. You know, it's, uh, any good thing you have is from the Lord. And as well, we should, we should pass, it, pass it on in uh, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. I can find that. He says, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. We can thank him for all that he's done. God has, we've found grace in his sight, and we also should pass it on. God's been very good to us. Um, in Exodus 33 there, verse 13, uh, this is Moses talking. He says, now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, well, he, he has, you know, God's told him that. Show me now thy way that I may know thee. Uh, well, God, God already, you know, God said, we, this is already taken care of, that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. But God goes even, even further then. There's a couple more things. Verse 14, it says, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. It's like he's just kind of adding on to the things he's already said to Moses. And, uh, you know, this is a promise I hope that you're quite familiar with. My presence shall go with thee. You know, God not only knows this, but he... Um, He's with us. He, like the, uh, the Great Commission, as we call it in, in uh, the end of Ch Matthew, lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Yeah, that's part of God's promise to us. Uh, in Hebrews 13, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hebrews 13, 15. In fact, the psalmist put it this way. He said, where can I go from your presence? <laughs> and where can I hide from from the Lord, uh, my presence shall, shall go with thee. And uh, you know that, that should encourage us. The Lord is with us. The Lord knows us. He's, he shows grace. H how does that encourage you? Is there any, anything that comes to mind there? My presence shall go with thee. Hmm. I guess it's the same. Kind of thought, isn't it? Yeah. But it also makes you feel really not as comfortable, really, that I have to stand with the Father, or I'll die with you because I'll be out of that every time. That's mm. the joy. He knows. Exactly. He has grace. He's with us. Yeah. In that way, we, we rest. And we're resting, aren't we? Yeah. We're not having to. And that's the next one. I'll give thee rest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like when we confess it to him, he says, I saw you do it. <laughs> you know, it's not like he's, oh, oh, you did that? <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. When, I, when I do things wrong, I just say, oh, well, Lord, I'm so sorry. It's just par for the course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, really, that's what it is, because I'm a sinner. And so I just, I am so grateful that mm. I can rest in him. Religion promotes the idea that we've got to kind of earn his favor and, and kind of, you know, do penance kind of a, of a thing. But confession is actually just agreeing with God. It's not saying, oh, please forgive me. It's just saying, I was wrong. I did it. Um, now, you know, we'll normally have an attitude of sorrow just because if you're saved, sin doesn't sit right. But uh, he says, my presence will go with thee. And that's a real blessing. Uh, like, like we're saying here, you know, he doesn't say, particularly the New Testament promises, uh, it, it's not, well, I'll go with you if this, or unless you do that. You know, it's, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And uh, that's a blessing. And then the last one there in, in uh, verse 14 is, and I will give thee rest. We'll, we'll spend more time on this next week looking at Hebrews uh, chapter 4. But, uh, you know, Jesus said in, in Matthew 11, let's see, I think, is that the one where he says, take my yoke upon you? Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. There's rest in the Lord. It's, it's the idea that you're not up in the air. Do you know the feeling of that? You know, where you're, you're just not settled. You're, you just, things are up in the air. God says, in him we have rest. 
we don't have to be in a kerfluffle or whatever words you want to you want to put there. Uh, we'll we'll look next week in particular at Hebrews chapter four when he talks about uh, God's rest. And I found it interesting to notice that at the end of that chapter is that famous verse that we all know. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And that's his conclusion of that chapter on rest. That his presence is there. He knows us. He showed us grace. And uh, I will give thee rest. God gives us rest. Uh, back to Exodus 33. Let me just kind of finish up the chapter here and give you the, a bit of the context. Verse 16, he says, for wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separate, I'm sorry, separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. It's what makes us different as Christians. The Lord is with us. And it separates us. Being a Christian separates you from people that aren't Christians. Now, not, no, not in a bad way. It doesn't mean like... You know, Look down your nose at them, kind of thing. But you just have a, you're just different. You know, the Jews were different because they were God's people, and uh, as as a Christian, there's there's that separation that we we experience. He goes on, verse 17. The Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. So Moses is saying to God, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he, this is, is God still talking, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Now, I, I don't understand all, all of that, but uh, I do know this. Uh, we're never going to see everything about God. <laughs> uh, we could not see his face and live. And, uh, but we can see his glory. We can see some things about God. Uh, we don't see everything, but we can see uh, that he knows us. We can see that he gives us grace. Uh, we can see that he's with us, and, and he gives us rest. And uh, the, these verses are the basis for this, one of the songs in our hymnal, He Hideth My Soul. And I thought we'd end by, by singing that. It's, uh, we'll just sing the first two verses of page 228. Some of these will be more meaningful to some than others, but... Uh, as I read through the scriptures, I just often notice things. I think, oh, that's encouraging. <laughs> and uh, so that's, that's what we're looking at in these, these weeks. So page 228, uh, let's sing verses 1 and 2. He hideth my soul. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock Where rivers of pleasure I see He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock That shadows a dry thirsty land He hideth my life in the dark of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand a wonderful savior is jesus my lord he taketh my burden Shall not be moved, he giveth me strength as my day. He hideth my soul 
In the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land, He hideth my life in the depths of His love and covers me there with His hand and covers me there with His hand.